What's going on, my fish buddies, my fish friends, my aquarium lovers? We are looking at my 29 gallon tank. It's been a minute. I know I disappear here and there and I come back, watch some random videos, but we're looking at the 29 gallon tank. Pretty clear. It was a lot clearer. Just finished feeding about five minutes ago, about maybe 10 minutes. You can see the poop right there coming out. They just ate some good food. Um, tank is a little messy. We did a really huge cleaning on this tank. I did pretty much a, I would say, 80% water chain. Like I brought it down to about like right there. Tanks look smaller in, in this video, but it's pretty a pretty big tank for being 29. Um, but yeah, got a few fish in here. Uh, these are grow out grow out tank that I'm using. All of these fish will be moving, maybe not the plotties, but or the beta, but the gourami will be moving out of here. Plecos will be moving out of here. Dildrolos will be moving out of here. The quarry cats will be moving out of here and be going into a much larger tank. But I'm not able to do any of this until I move. Uh, I've been preparing to move for the last five to six months. The pandemic kind of ruined all the plans that I had for the fish room for moving and all that. So everything just became a little slower on the process of setting everything up. But yeah, I did a really big cleaning in this tank and it's crazy how fast a fish tank can get dirty. Like all of this scum, I cleaned it off. It was good for about three days. Three days of just none of this scum, this black stuff, all that was clean. The whole lid was cleaned. Look at it, look at it now. The filter, like I haven't even put the lid back on. That's how lazy I've kind of been after doing this huge cleaning. This was like just so gunky and crazy looking. Let's see. Yeah, just so gunky and crazy looking that, let's get some light here. Look at that. It was just ridiculous how dirty that this filter had gotten. But I like it to let it get like that. It gets very beneficial. And what I do, I just put that into some other tanks. I start up tanks like that. Get beneficial really quick. Uh, I'm no longer running the cartridge in here. Now I'm doing the the balls, this stuff here, with a sponge layer, and I want to see how that works. It's really good for like that in the beginning because that sponge can get a lot of bacteria in and hold a lot of debris along with the balls as well, the filter media balls, and you can use that to start up other fish tanks, which I'm going to be doing really soon for my girlfriend. She got a tank at her house. But this is this tank. Look how clear it is. This tank has struggled with cloudiness. I think it was like an old tank syndrome type issue. And I think the water change benefited it very well. Because I was always just doing 25 to 50% water changes once a week. And sometimes twice a week. I'll do one Thursday and Sunday. And sometimes if I didn't want to do the Sunday one, I'll just do it Thursday. But I feed this tank really heavy because I got some <clears throat> big fish in here. Just him alone. He's a monster. He'll eat all the flakes, all the bloodworms. He will uh, go at the algae wafers. He won't let anyone really get food. So I have to feed this tank really heavy so that my smaller fish can actually get to some food because they have smaller mouths. Especially look how little her mouth is compared to his mouth over there. Look how fat she is. That's not bloatiness. She just eats a lot. So them two, they're my greediest fish. Those are the pigs of the tank. And my plecoses, I have to struggle to like really get them to feed off of the algae wafers because he just attacks them. Sometimes I move them out of this tank for a while just so that I can get them plumped up and making sure that they're healthy and eating. Um, a real way to tell if your plecos is healthy, if you look at the top of the head, if that is cur curved in like this, that means your plecos is not eating enough not having enough uh, food or variety in their diet also looking at the body if you see it like just too thin kind of ribbish looking they're not eating a lot especially the growth plecoses grow very fast 
um, but I won't say that for all. Some plecoses that they like stung, and they don't grow as quick due to breeding and stuff like that. That this tank, that's the update on this tank. We done a really huge uh, cleaning on this tank, feeding, uh, left it the same pretty much. I adjusted the the wooden the wood a little bit different. I set them up more. I don't know if they like it like this. I know the beta likes to like right in there. That's her spot. The plecos likes to hang in the middle and like right in between there. They like to sit up on the top. One of my plecos have made this out of their area. But other than that, this is a tank. The plants, I can't get them to stay down because our dojo loach, he just unburies them. They were down for a long time, a good long time with no issue, but yeah. This is the only plant that won't come up and it grew a lot, like look how high it is. A good 10 inches, 11 inches. Here goes my 10 gallon tank, female beta. Let me get you some light. Female beta, neons, panda quarries, and some snails. That a medium cleaning on this tank still hasn't been able to. Let me let me clean it. There we go. Sorry about that. I do that about every two three days. Just clean up that water, slime, coat, whatever you call it, gunk. Haven't been able to replace the filter just yet. Um, but what I am going to be doing is pulling that apart, cleaning it up. Because it's only a 10 gallon filter and this is a 10 gallon tank. I don't like to have the same amount of gallons pumping the tank. I always like about 10 more gallons more to the fish tank. Um, but that's what we're working with now. The pandemic has been kicking my ass with keeping up with fish. I've been trying to make my own filters um, through water bottles and air pumps and stuff like that. I haven't found one yet that I tested that can actually keep up and keep the tank clear and clean. So for right now, this is what I'm working with until further notice. But the tank, other than that, it, the plants are growing. This one has grown a lot. That one back there has definitely grew a lot. These ones up in the front. This one's dying off a little bit, getting a little yellow. That one's good. I don't, don't want to say dying pits. It still looks pretty green. It's just that one little leaf I got to rip off. There's not much of an update to this tank. The last video I shot was about the beta. Was about the beta um, with her illness and going blind. I actually think um, she gained a lot more vision from that eye that I thought was blind. Uh, the bloatiness kind of went down. That weird bump that you see right there is still there. I don't know what it is. I don't want to consider it a parasite and I don't want to treat for parasite because if it's not a parasite, I can kill her treating her for it um, using the medicine. And I'm just not willing to really risk that. If she's going to pass, I'll just let her pass of, I guess, the natural causes or whatever she's sick from. Then, messing with that and then it not being a parasite. She still eats. She eats a lot of blood worms. Uh, a lot of flakes. She goes at the algae wafers that I feed the snails every here and there, but... Uh, not too many. She's not a big fan of it, but she will go down there and pick at it. I love these guys. I always thought the albino ones were really hyperactive, but I find that the panda ones are just as hyperactive, especially on this corner here. They love to swim up and down, 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 and up and down, like just nonstop. A lot of times I think it's because I'm sitting on the bed on this side and they can see me, so they're just like feed me, feed me type thing, but other than that, they keep the, the sand kind of clean but since this got in here is not strong enough to push that stuff up as they stirring it especially like this corner over here now we got the 29 long tank we looked at the tall we looked at the 10 gallon now this is the long still pumping a lot of snails in here I didn't do a big cleaning on this tank. I don't have issues with this tank at all. It stays in perfect water conditions. 
the only thing that I have to do is monitor the snails. Making sure that I pick out any ones that die off. There is a few that die here and there. Especially uh, the blue mystery snails. I find that they're growing at a really slow pace. That they grow at a really slow pace and they struggle to get to food. Uh, unlike the yellow golden snails which get to the food very quickly and I'm not I don't know if that's because there's more of them or they're just faster at sliding across the sand and the glass I put a calcium bone here that's used for turtles they've been picking at it to see if that helps the blue ones to get big um, I think I shot a video last time about our female snail passing and watching all of her children eat at her. Um, yeah, that was very disturbing. Watch that at your own risk. <laughs> this fell over and I kind of like it like that. It's a fake artificial plant. Fell over. Left it just like that. Plants in this tank are doing okay. The only one that I'm really seeing growth is this one here. And the one back there is shooting off a lot of little littler ones that are finally getting some actual leaves. Um, I had some that came off and they kind of just got sucked up. But I just let it be. Sometimes it, it's good to just let it rock, you know. The fish are doing great. Haven't lost not one over here. There's not much going on in this tank. We have eight... Uh, Sarpace tetras um, and four of these little silver tetras that I don't see right now. They're in there somewhere. They're back there. Yeah, but there's not really much to this tank. I wanted to add two rams, blue rams hit to this tank, but I figured it's enough going on in here. There's a lot of snails. Uh, there's enough fish in here. This, like I said, this tank I didn't I have perfect water conditions as you see it's very clear very clear water um, the tank is what gives it that cloudiness look a little bit especially like in this area but it's going here it's really clear water and it has no smell to it at all most fish tanks will have like this fish smell or like this weird uh, beneficial bacteria smell this tank doesn't have it it's perfect water conditions I test it twice a month sometimes three just to see where I'm at I have no issues with this tank. The only thing that happens to this tank here is the ammonia level. So this tank here is usually a sit between 6.8 and 7.0. I haven't seen the 7.0 in probably about a month and some weeks. I'm sitting right at the uh, 6.8 and I've been there for a while. Uh, it sits at high pH at um, 7.4. My ammonia, now since I have a lot of snails in here and a few fish, it gets in between that 25 and 50. But as soon as I hit that water change, <clears throat> it's right into the zero. And then, of course, these two here, I sit in between 25 and roughly between 10 and 20. But my water changes, I'm doing, some, doing them so frequently that it doesn't really move anywhere. It stays in that same area, and that's what you want. You want a consistent flow of the same water perimeters your fish adapt what a lot of people don't understand a lot of these youtubers they preach these numbers and people start chasing these numbers and you start losing a lot of fish chasing these numbers i'm speaking of experience uh, experience because i have done it i chased the numbers i chased it the phs and i went through a lot of fish and it's heartbreaking because we're learning and we're keeping an animal trapped in a prison for our own amusement so if you're going to do that you want to learn as much as you can as quick as possible and keeping your fish tank clean and studied so that you have 100% life at all times you're going to have death that is normal so I didn't want to throw in the rams and just knock off uh, my water levels I'd rather leave it like this and what I'm doing with these snails uh, if we go to my 10 gallon, you see my bigger ones here. These bigger ones came from that, this tank here. Came from over there. And what I'm doing is I'm putting the big ones in here. They're getting to about a little bigger than this. And then I give them to friends. I sell them. 
so on and so forth. These ones are actually going to my girlfriend's tank to help her tank out a little bit with uh, starting her tank, which her cycle is not too far off. The snails will give it a boost and it won't cause too much harm to them. And then I will pull out another four or five snails, maybe six from this tank here and put them in here and I keep that cycle going until whenever I move and I can get the snails into a lot bigger tank. Hopefully by then I don't have pretty much any snails. Now I would like to put some snails over here. I would like to put some snails over here, but what happens is Dildra Loach, they eat snails. So he, if they fit in his mouth, he eats them. He doesn't care. I had put like maybe five of them in here and they disappeared.